Now about that volume calibration for the penetrometer. To calibrate the penetrometer volume, we need to seal the penetrometer, determine its sealed mass, fill it with mercury, then determine the mass after filling. The mass difference will represent the mercury required to fill the penetrometer while empty. Using the density of mercury, the volume of the penetrometer can be determined. The Autopore 5 includes a temperature sensor near the low pressure system that can be used to determine the density of mercury from a stored table of density versus temperature. The software includes a wizard under the unit menu to help with penetrometer calibration. We recommend that you repeat the determination three times and use the average value. You can prepare a penetrometer file that can include the calibrated volume. By selecting the penetrometer when preparing the sample information file for analysis, the volume is loaded automatically. The penetrometer mass will need to be updated as it changes each time the penetrometer is sealed with a different amount of grease. Let's prepare that penetrometer property file for a new penetrometer. It is a five cubic centimeter powder penetrometer with a 1.131 cubic centimeter stem volume. This is a type 10 penetrometer. Let's open a new penetrometer property file from the file menu. This is penetrometer 10-0723 and that will be the name of our new file. We will click the drop down list and select the default parameters for a type 10 penetrometer. Now when we received this penetrometer, it came with a specific penetrometer constant used to convert capacitance change into intrusion volume. What is shown here is a default value, but for this penetrometer, we need to enter 22.285 as the constant. We do not yet know the penetrometer volume and mass, so we will leave that as is, along with the stem volume and maximum head pressure values that are shown currently. Let's enter an identifying name for the penetrometer and save the file. Now let's move back over to the calibration wizard. Click on the drop down list for port one and select our new file. Now we need to seal the penetrometer and determine its empty mass. As with preparing a sample for analysis, we need to seal the penetrometer only this time doing so without adding sample. Chris starts with a line of Apiazon H grease on his finger, then applies it to the penetrometer by rotating and lifting the top of the penetrometer along the line of grease on his finger, effectively removing most of the grease and transferring it to the sealing surface of the penetrometer. He removes any excess grease from the outer edge of the penetrometer and from his finger. And then applies the cap, being careful to align it to the top of the ceiling surface. He verifies that the cap is properly aligned on top of the penetrometer and checks for a uniform seal by looking through the penetrometer at the ceiling surface. Now he adds the sealing nut and tightens it snugly. We need to know the mass of the empty penetrometer and so Chris tears the balance and records the penetrometer mass. Since there is no worry for any sample entering the penetrometer stem, it can be turned up and placed on the cap. And we record the mass to use when calibrating the penetrometer. We move back to the computer and enter this mass. We need to install the sealed penetrometer into the low pressure port just as we did earlier when we analyzed the sample, remembering to include the spacer to properly align the penetrometer and the transparent retainer. Once the port is sealed and the detector assembly is in place, we can move back to the computer. We click fill on the calibration wizard. The penetrometer will be evacuated and filled with mercury. Once filled, we remove the penetrometer to determine the assembly mass. The balance is teared and the penetrometer is placed on the balance. The mass is recorded. We return to the software and enter the assembly mass. The software calculates the penetrometer volume. We then repeat this twice, emptying and cleaning the penetrometer each time. 
The software calculates the average penetrometer volume and stores it in the penetrometer properties file for future use. Next we will look at some results for a previously analyzed sample, in this case a porous powdered material.